Hello there. So yes, uh, here we are again in the screen. So just a little video. This is my neighborhood. And if I shoot around, yep, you can see. Okay. And this record shop is part of what I would like to talk about with the topic of today. So last week uh, we looked at uh, talent. So let's move on. You are student talent. So this week let's focus on logic and creativity. And the idea is that uh, at the end of this short 10 minute intro, you're going to listen to a podcast about music streaming. So the question to consider when listening to the podcast, it's around 27 minutes, is to what extent is streaming, is streaming music toxic to the planet? Is it actually toxic? So that's the question. However, before we get there, let's look at this idea of talent and move on to the, the next level, which is creativity, logic and creativity in math. So yes, why are we here uh, in front of this record shop? Well, it's my local record shop and it really relates to the story of three women, three talented women over 200 years who changed maybe the way we look at uh, mechanization. So Tuesday the 13th of October uh, will pass this week and it's uh, hashtag ALD20. The hashtag ALD, uh, the initials AL stand for Ada Lovelace. ALD20 is there to celebrate the achievements of women in STEM. That's science, technology, engineering and math. Now, Ada Lovelace is a celebrated mathematician who basically championed the idea of the algorithm in the 1800s. This is the kind of thing it looks like. Then we have Grace Hopper, whose innovations in the computer programming language COBOL, which is still used today in many mainframes, helped non-mathematicians uh, embrace coding as part of their skill set. And in the same period of the mid 1900s, you have uh, Catherine Johnson, who passed away this year. Catherine Johnson helped produce the idea of uh, geolocalization, but this was through the NASA space mission with the Apollo mission to space. So yes, how did we get to this uh, streaming music where we went from the CD, which needed to be put onto uh, megabytes. A German company in 1995 heralded this new compression format when now we are celebrating 25 years of the MP3 format. Uh, well, the story is the idea of automation, coding and geolocalization. And these three aspects basically help us stream music today and gather that data. So we have three notable women here in STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, Ada Lovelace in the mid 1800s, whose innovations in algorithm helped mechanize many of uh, the, the way factories were uh, running. And then we move to the mid 1900s, where we have Grace Hopper, whose COBOL language helped possibly people with less math knowledge to access coding. And the third one being Katherine Johnson, whose contributions to the NASA space mission, the Apollo mission, uh, helped plot trajectories from Earth to space. So geolocalization is an aspect here. And what do these three things add up to? Algorithm, coding, geolocalization in which way have they forced us to adapt some of the activities we engage with 
Well, in the mid 1990s, this probably became more obvious with the impact of MP3 as the format where we could now compress several megabytes of uh, music into files that could be transmitted down uh, a phone line and then listened to on devices such as the iPod which was to come. So these three innovations, algorithm, coding and geolocalization possibly help provide the three elements that created the modern streaming platforms that we have today. But it wasn't until 1995 when the MP3 audio compression software format was introduced to the market. The same year that my local record store, Music Avenue, also entered the market. So where are we today with visiting the record store to um, enjoy music, buy music and enjoy it, or simply streaming. So we have the British innovation of algorithm from Ada Lovelace and the American innovations of COBOL and geolocalization, both from Hopper and uh, Johnson. And so put this together, combine it with the German innovation of the MP3 and then you had a fusion in 1995 of um, the way we could consume music was totally transformed from that day forward 25 years ago. So Saturday was also notable in the October calendar for an event called National Album Day with the idea to celebrate how the artist originally envisaged their music to be listened to track by track instead of playlists. And yes, I know what you're gonna say. Uh, YouTube is easy. There are plenty of albums to hear on YouTube. However, two things, advertising, and also it's very distracting to be on that platform. So I did buy an album from my local record shop here. And as you can see, this is a picture of Francesco, the owner, on a website that I actually launched uh, this weekend to the simple idea of just going to your record store, go to your record shop and just enjoy it. Now, yes, uh, we are all consumers of music and uh, to what extent is streaming our playlists, is streaming your music and our playlists actually toxic to the planet? So here's an album, this one, Diggable Planets, their 25th anniversary release of this from the time when I was your age, 20. It was originally released when you, I was the same age as you there, 20. So 25 years later, here we are standing outside Music Avenue, the same year that Music Avenue started, the MP3 format was unleashed. So today, yes, this is the point. Is streaming actually toxic for the planet? So come back to Teams, and then we will continue to have a little discussion about this before you listen to the final podcast. Okay.